Hey there, ACCA Performance Management students. My name is Steve Willis. Today we are looking at the learning curve. We are looking at past exam question chair. I'm also going to show you how to tackle the learning index formula using the spreadsheet tool. Okay, so subscribe to the channel here if you'd like more of these videos and feel free to give it a like if you find it helpful. Here is the question, everybody. Pause the video and give this a try in the practice platform or the constructed response environment before you check out the rest of the video. The learning rate as an index is 99% of the time given to you. However, if it's not, you need to be able to deploy the formula in the spreadsheet tool. They give you the formula in the formula page, and it's quite easy in the spreadsheet tool. It is simply the logarithm of the learning rate over the logarithm of the number two. Let me show you how to do that in the spreadsheet tool. I'm going to make three rows in my spreadsheet, the logarithm of the learning rate, one row for the logarithm of two, and then I'm going to divide one over the other. It always makes sense to break big formulas into small pieces. This will let the marker follow along with what you're doing and let him give you the own figure rule if there is an error in one of your figures, it will be assumed correct for the rest of the, the time that you use it. <clears throat> I will double click on the column separator to auto enlarge that column D, and I'm going to get to work using the power of the spreadsheet, the built-in functions. I will simply type the equal sign, the letters LOG for logarithm. Then I will open up a parentheses and I can type the learning rate, okay, which was 75%. Then I will open up another equal sign and the log of the number two. And I will do a little bit of tactical formatting here. There are no marks for formatting, but I'll just go up there and set that to two or three decimal places. And I will set cell E11 equal to cell E9 over E10 and let the spreadsheet do the work for me and applying the same formatting. Voila, everybody, there we have the learning rate as an index. Make sure you practice this at home before you hit that exam hall. I'm going to fine tune the formatting just a bit here. There wouldn't be a mark for this, but just to make sure the marker is crystal clear, I will set that to three decimal places as that is the usual presentation, and it only took me a matter of seconds. As I mentioned, that learning rate working is just there as a demonstration. You would not need to do this in the exam because they gave you the negative 0 0.415. So that part was just for your practice. Let's now get to solving the question as exactly as you would in the exam. We're looking for the time and the cost for chair number eight. Okay, so I'm going to label what I'm doing for the marker, and I am looking for the total time for eight chairs. So I'll break this into smaller pieces, and I'll make one row for the total time for eight chairs one row for the total time for seven chairs, the difference being the total time for chair number eight. Let's not forget, the question is looking for the cost, not the time, so we multiply that figure in row 10 times $15 per hour. Let me double click on the column separator to auto enlarge that, and guys, we have an amazing template set up. Now I can break this down into more workings and use copy paste to make really quick work of the rest of this problem. So working one will be the total time for eight chairs and I'll have two pieces there. I will get the cumulative average time per unit for eight chairs. Then I can multiply that by eight to get the total time for eight chairs. I will use the formula. 
as presented in the formula page. Y is equal to AX to the power of B, A being the time for unit number one, X the number of units that we're doing, which is eight, and B is that learning index, which is given to us in the real exam question, but I can use a relative cell address to grab that negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.415 that we just calculated a moment ago. Because I'm going to copy paste this formula, I will turn the relative cell address into an absolute cell address. This means when I copy paste my formula, the cell reference E11 will stay as E11 and it will not change in relationship to the location of that formula. All I have to do is add a dollar symbol in front of the row and in front of the column and it becomes an absolute reference. I hit return and I get that average time per unit. I multiply that by the number 8 and there we go. And I can now do a little bit of tactical formatting and I can set my figure in B8 equal to the working in B15. Now, all I have to do is copy and paste working one into working two, and I can save a whole lot of time. So I move up a bit and I will grab the range of cells from A13 to B15. I hit Control Copy, Control Paste. Now I just have to go in and I can just manually change out the different variables, which is really changing the 8 to a 7 every place I used it. I know what you're thinking. We could have made a more elegant financial model. However, there are no marks for spreadsheet skills. There are no marks for financial modeling. So in this case, I will just do it manually. I'll go changing each 8 to a 7. Friends, we are so close to being done. We'll go upstairs. We will set the total time for 7 equal to the result of our working below. Then $15 can per hour. B9 from B8, getting the total time for chair number 8, which is 3.04 hours. Last but not least, multiplying that in row 11 by And, ladies and gents, let's bold it out so the marker can see clearly what we're doing. And we have used the spreadsheet tool to make quick work of a learning curve problem. Friends, we've finished up the learning curve part of this video, which was the main objective I had. Let's now finish up the question. The question is asking us to get a price. And the price has two components, other variable costs, the labor cost that we calculated a moment ago. Okay, we can total that up and then we can apply a markup of 50%. The other variable costs, $230, okay. The labor is equal to the figure that we got in cell B11, okay? That will be equal to the sum of those two figures. And the markup then will be equal to that result in B24 multiplied by 1.5. Let's bold that out so the marking team can see it very clearly and give us full credit for our wonderful work. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> there you have it, the learning curve question chair. I hope you found this helpful. Please like the video and subscribe if you'd like more. Good luck on your exams, everybody. Bye for now.